lot more than that. Of course, we need an economic and a financial analysis, but we also need a social analysis. We need an environmental analysis. We need a general analysis, a historical analysis, a political analysis on what those steps mean. And the only is the tool that can help us. It's one of the tools, not the tool. One of the tools that can help us find out about all these aspects of, of the dead. Some of us see these audits as a, as a pure exercise of participation, transparency, and accountability. Some others see these audits as a way of making, of, of uh, engaging the government to decide which uh, debts to cancel. And therefore, we propose citizens' audits, government audits, um, parliamentarian audits, uh, different kinds of uh, different actors, and even a combination of those actors participating on, on those audits. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through some historical examples very very fast uh, to to show you that this the things we are presenting now for Europe uh, has some precedent in in the global south. Probably the, the most known one is the one in, in Ecuador. Uh, as some of you, I guess, or most of you have uh, heard before. In 2007, the Ecuadorian government, with, uh, um, under the presidency of uh, recently elected by that time, Rafael Correa, uh, <coughs> who was himself a, a, a death campaigner before becoming part of the government and before becoming president, uh, he set up this audit commission. It was one of the promises of the electoral campaign, and it was one of the first decisions he took in the government. The audit commission was formed both by representatives of the Ecuadorian uh, state, of the Ecuadorian authorities, uh, academic experts, professional auditors, and local and international athletes. Um, for a year and a half, they looked for hundreds of contracts, but they didn't. Uh, look just for the contracts and the contents of the contract. They visited communities. They did a gender analysis on that. They did <laughs> environmental analysis on the impact of the loans that were financed by the World Bank or by uh, certain European uh, governments. I had the, the luck to participate in the evaluation of the Spanish loans to Ecuador. It was very exciting. It was the first time we had a contract in our hand, a debt contract in our hand. We had access, being an official uh, all these, it gives you access to, to the documentation. But it was also very important to have a, the, the opportunity to ask to the people who were actually affected by those projects, financed by the Spanish government, uh, what were the outcomes of those projects. The result of the, of the audit was a report that pointed out several illegitimacies, illegalities, and irregularities in the in the, in the signing of the debt, on the process of, the, of indebtedness, uh, and especially on those, on two uh, bond emissions, and the Ecuadorian government used those illegitimacies and irregularities in the bond emissions to renegotiate <laughs> with the financial market uh, a, a buyback of uh, Ecuadorian debt at a 70% discount and saved the country together with principal and interest more than $7 billion. Uh, due to that decision and that action, the proportion of money, of budget, of national budget, mm -hmm. debt, debt and the ones that were destined to pay education and health just switched and, and the resources for health and education increased automatically. We travel into the past. We have the example of Brazil in the 1930s, who did an official uh, audit and actually cancelled unilaterally part of, uh, of, the, of the debt. Uh, but also in the 2000s, the Jubilee movement in, in, in Brazil asked for an official audit, and since they didn't have the answers from the expected answers from the government, they started the citizens' audit as a way of pressuring the government. And finally, in 2009, 2010 they forced a parliamentary commission to investigate part of the debt. Uh, in the Philippines, again, the anti-debt movement forced the parliament, the lower chamber of the parliament, to agree on a commission for an audit. Unfortunately, the government of the presidency of the Philippines blocked that decision, but uh, they didn't throw the 
solid one. They started as, as citizens solid in waiting for the government uh, to change their position or pressuring the government for changing their position. In Argentina, in July 2000, a judge called Jorge Ballesteros disseminated uh, after years of research in a sort of a judicial audit that was begun by a journalist who actually didn't see the end of the process. Well, this, this, this judge determined that most of the debt uh, acquired in the dictatorship, uh, the Argentinian dictatorship, was illegal, illicit, or with fraud. Uh, the sentence didn't have the effective results because some of the crimes had already uh, run out of date. So I don't know the name Yeah. Bolivia, uh, Mali, Nepal, or Zimbabwe are some of the countries where social movements have been uh, campaigning for that audit or doing citizen that audit. And finally, in Europe, the recent debt campaign block uh, convinced the government to do a credit of the first and only one credit or debt audit. Unfortunately, the government decided to contract the audit com uh, company Deloitte <laughs> to do the audit. <laughs> it wasn't a very participative audit, but Yes, it's the first experience of a country committing to an audit and taking into account the concept of illegitimate debt, which is also an important step. If you would have asked me about debt audit in the year 2000, I'd say, yes, yeah, nice the utopia. And then we have, uh, 14 years later, countries doing debt audit, uh, social movements imposing citizen debt audit, and it, it has become a really useful tool. And that's how, when the crisis in Europe uh, started, of course, then, uh, we have talking to each other, different countries, different social movements started to think about debt audit as a useful tool also for us, which has been, it had been in the global south. So we have experiences in Greece, in Portugal, in Ireland, in Spain, in Italy, Belgium, France, Tunisia, and Egypt, and then in, in, in movements in the UK, in, in Slovenia, in Germany, uh, and I'm probably missing some other countries, uh, willing to do some work in the lines of, of different kinds of, of audits. Uh, as I said before, the audit can be official, you can be asking for an official audit or doing a citizen's audit for a combination of both. It can be more economical, it can be more social, it can be a lot of things. So to see how the different movements are dealing with it and, and what idea of, of the audit they have or of that campaign have taken off on. Uh, I'm gonna do a round of questions to my three colleagues. Uh, they are all of them part of the ICON network, which was created in 2012, uh, with 12 countries participating. So there are 12, 12 European and North and African countries present in this, in this network of uh, citizens of it. Um, and we are having our fourth uh, meeting tomorrow and the day after tomorrow here in London, so that's why there's so many of us uh, present here. Anyone who wants to join us, the meeting is, is open to anyone willing to work on that audit. Uh, so I'm going to ask you, uh, the first question is what is the main purpose of your campaign and what do you want to achieve with this uh, campaign and with this debt audit? I'm going to start with Jeremy. You have three minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been very strict with my time, but I'll be with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alamba. Um, apologize for my English. Just to say that uh, in Belgium, when we began one year ago to present COVID, some people asked us why don't just add to we claim for cancellation of that and without using citizen uh, audit. And the answer is typically democracy. And I mean by that that we have seen other cancellation of that uh, for the creditors, like uh, the last example in Greece. Uh, I won't enter the argument why uh, we want to make a citizen audit in Belgium, but that's the main point, that the debt cancellation is not only technical, it's uh, overall political, as we said on the panel before. And so in Belgium, what was our goal, the goal of the LB? Uh, first, which was where did the money uh, went, as in the, the title here, where did all the money go, sorry, uh, in English. Well, mainly in Belgium, it's quite easy to know the main cause of uh, indebtedness, uh, the actual debt. Uh, the last example were 
the 33 billion we put on bank, which is one, um, one, one to ten, I mean, yeah, <laughs> ten percent of the actual debt. <laughs> Before it was much more about the interest we paid in the 80s until now, it's more or less 300 billion, which is the actual stock of our debt. And we can make this exercise for, uh, on the contrary, not the money uh, that went out, but the money that didn't came in as the, the, the taxes on uh, the wealthiest in, uh, in Belgium. And we made one of the exercises about all the counter neoliberal reforms we get since the 80s in Belgium. And we are more or less, it depends on your point of view, the 225 billion that didn't enter during the decade, which is two thirds of the actual uh, stock for the debt. It was only to give an image what are the main causes of our debt, of our actual debt in Belgium. A lot of people know that, but it's not sufficient to make political uh, proposition. So why you know this? Because uh, that is the first. Um, Expenditure in Belgium, which is 20% uh, of our expenditure, and there there is no not a lot of people knowing that. Uh, it's, it's the, the first um, uh, sorry, uh, the first information we give, but we got much more information. We put the, the first uh, we put the citizen of it made in Belgium on in the entrance there, and we got like 15 15 um, info disinformation majority of the people in Belgium don't know. So the first goal, and I will tell more after I, I hope in the discussion, uh, the first goal is sensibilization and mobilization. The second goal is research and analysis. So the audit in Belgium must be mainly to talk with people and to inform the people and try to mobilize around the best issues. And after we, we got all those experts and people trying to find figures, to find facts, to feed uh, the movement. I will just finish to say that uh, the goal is to cancel, it is legitimate debt, of course, as well as the, the credit of uh, other countries. We want to make, as Norway, uh, the, the audit of our. I don't know English, sorry. Well, all the, all the money the other countries had to pay to best lenders, as uh, Congo, but also Greece, etc. We want to agree to this as well. And the final objective, which is revolution, as uh, Costa said before, would be a permanent audit, a permanent control of our budget, national budget, and local budget. already a small group of uh, people and organizations um, starting to look at the debt crisis um, and from that a debt audit was commissioned by two of those organizations and ASPI and also Union Unite. So this has um, the clear intention of trying to establish um, an accurate picture of the debt situation. One of the things that's unique to the debt crisis in Ireland was the extent to which our government walked the people into debt servitude before the crisis had even visibly erupted in other countries. So in September 2008, um, we woke up to headlines revealing that the government had signed us up as a kind of collateral, <laughs> that we were suddenly responsible for the losses of six of the major private banking institutions in our country. So me, my children, all of my friends, everyone I know and anyone I didn't know in the country were suddenly responsible for these private gambling losses. To guarantee um, deposits is one thing, but to guarantee liabilities, especially when you have no idea of what those liabilities are, is really quite something else. So the audit was there um, primarily to try to discover the extent of those liabilities. Um, and also the origin of them, because the debt crisis um, is still described by our government and slavishly by the media 
as um, a problem that is generated by the system. Um, our finance minister at the time said that we all party. I don't remember that, but apparently we did. Subsequently, our, our prime minister, or our teacher, uh, went on record on a, on, a, on a visit abroad, forgetting that we might hear him, you know, <laughs> television. Um, he went on record to say, we all get mad. Uh, and so these are kind of really quite cynical and crude estimations of the debt crisis needed to needed to be addressed, because actually, surprisingly, they have considerable traction amongst the Irish public. We, we internalise that really quite readily, but it's our fault. So the audit was about establishing how much it is, where it came from, hopefully to serve as an education tool that, you know, that it can be built on. Um, and also, it's not seen as the definitive uh, audit, it's to lay a foundation for future work in terms of the source material and the references that were generated. So it, it is um, an accounting exercise, actually, I have to say. If we're looking for a citizen debt audit, we'll have to, we have to build on this because it, you know, it's missed out on that opportunity, I think, for people to get involved and for citizens to see themselves as part of it. Um, but it has laid out very clearly that the debt in our country is overwhelmingly bank debt. Right, so that the narrative that we all party is clearly just wrong. Um, it was roundly ignored by government. You know, unlike the situation in Ecuador, there was a little flurry of media attention on it, but it was subsequently completely ignored. But it has laid the foundation for a campaign that I'm part of, for example, called the Anglo Not Our Debt Campaign. Anglo being the name of a, an infamous bank that accounted for almost half of the public funds, the public money that got pumped into recapitalisation. So we paid for it through our pension fund being raided, the exchequer was raided, and then promissory notes or giant IOUs were written by the state in order to bail out this, uh, this institution and those. So where the money went was actually really important question for us and it helped us to build um, campaigns on the back of the information contained within. So it's by no means the end and arguably we would really benefit from a more interactive, participatory um, and empowering <coughs> approach to, to a deeper order. Because Apart from being able to establish the numbers, which was that Little Ireland has uh, contingent debt, if you include the contingent liabilities of the bank, that come in at over 370 billion euros, with little, little more than 4 million of us in the country to deal with that. Um, but it also reveals the extent to which these are anonymous debts, that we really could not track down who uh, we allegedly owe this money to, and that has been very important. Jeez. I guess keep tweeting this out. Well, um, I'm Harriet. And I can from Spain from the teaching that all these platforms, this is a social movement that has already more than two years behind. And one of the things that may surprise people is that we are not auditors. We are teachers, uh, researchers, unemployed, uh, whatever, we are just citizens. We start this, this movement uh, uh, with the experience of other uh, organizations we have in the debt situation. Um, we see that that is the matrix of, the, of most of the changes, the structural changes that are happening in Spain, mostly in Prague, also before, but uh, the debt is huge now with the queues. Uh, that can be understood that the as a tool of the financial neocolonialism to implement uh, neoliberal policies. So, which is our main purpose, to neutralize that tool. How do we proceed to neutralize that tool called that? Well, we use the citizen audit that help us to understand the subjective political concept of illegitimacy. This concept is understood differently in different contexts, of course. And this concept is not only applied to bonds or credit, but also may be applied to the indebtedness and indebtedness mechanisms itself. Themselves, there are many. There are like uh, banking bailouts, there are privatizations, there are German said there is a lack of incomes in the taxation because of the regressive fiscal policies that are being implemented. So the legitimacy applies to many things, not only concrete uh, accounts we, we may uh, be capable to make. And uh, one of this concept of illegitimacy is introduced in the society, is understood by the society, part of that 
would be the calculation of the debt that we, uh, among the society, with uh, specific uh, research, technical studies involving many specifics like the uh, gender, ecological, historical debt, uh, after that study and understanding as a whole society the concept of illegitimacy and using it as a doctrine, we would, we would proceed to calculation, of course, related with uh, specific changes that uh, uh, allow us not to get involved again in the vicious circle of the okay. <laughs>
given that we already have an orbit to, to start with, so it would be a little bit very technical one. And one of the challenges in terms of building on that is the level, I think you've already mentioned, the difficulty in accessing further information. Um, the report itself quotes Henry Kissinger, um, with the comment of the use of constructive ambiguity when negotiating on sensitive issues. So we encounter that all the time, and unwillingness to, to give even the most basic, basic information while they continue to expect to continue paying. Um, there's also a certain amount of challenge attached to what is often portrayed as apathy amongst people, um, but I think it's probably more clearly read as just the overwhelming, overwhelming difficulty of living with this sort of shock and awe campaign of austerity. So people are already overwhelmed and trying to encourage them to deal with quite technical, complex issues with lots of numbers and statistics, the stuff that most of us don't understand is particularly weak, but that's not a um, it's not an attractive enterprise, so I think there's a big challenge for us as a movement to make that really, really much more accessible and to break it down in a way that then um, that pertains to its political relevance, but that is far more understandable for, for more of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Well, um, the big challenge is that uh, thousands of I mean, going to the, to the concrete and the technical part, of course, it is that the lack of transparency is not even a lot of transparency is then allows how how can we out it if we don't have just we just don't have any kind of information. We can see that the complexity of the issue do not uh, let us work on it properly. We we know that the, our public pensions are uh, invested in public debt. So there are a lot of uh, specifics uh, into the challenge. But as it was said before, the debt audit uh, it's not uh, a matter only by companies, it's also a social process to change uh, to change the model maybe. And here we, we think we are facing the biggest challenge. There is this mantra that the honest people pay their debts. I mean, we listen that in game of Thrones, we listen that in TV, mm -hmm. we listen that in the newspaper, we see it in the newspaper. It is a mantra, and it's a mantra that is used uh, uh, in any any context. Here, David David has written a lot about this. Um, dealing with that, dealing with the moral concept, and this is not philosophical. We can see it in the day by day life. In in, in Spain, in our context, uh, for instance, the the people affected by mortgages, for probably the most solid uh, social movement in, in Europe. Uh, uh, the, the, the biggest work they had to do was psychological work with the affected people because they were feeling guilty about not being capable of paying their mortgages. They were the guilty people. Um, well, uh, we had a, finance, a very complex financial product called preferred shares that was sold to all people, and when I mean all, I mean all people that they want to invest in um, private pensions, and they went to the, to the bank with the banker friend of the whole life, and they said, this is a deposit with a high rate of interest. But it is fully safe. Whenever you, you want, you come and you take your money back. It was like that. It was uh, a mechanism to feed with liquidity the banks, and there are hundreds of thousands of people that have lost all their life savings in Spain, and they, some of them, not anymore because society is kind of evolved, but many of them have thought, they just made the wrong investment. But they were uh, uh, fully liked by the banks. So this is, this is something that the moral concept of the guiltiness uh, makes people that pay that it's a priority. So um, with uh, this mantra that we have lived uh, beyond our capability, uh, people feel guilty about the crisis. People feel guilty about the, the poverty that is growing and growing up. And uh, this was transferred also to the public sphere. The institutionalization of this matter was also made in Spain. There was a change in the constitution two years ago, in 2011, I think, uh, almost three years ago, in August, when everyone is on holiday. You know, let's, let's hope that no one realizes. <laughs> and they made a change, and they, they wrote directly in the constitution that the absolute priority of our state budgets are paying debt and their interests. Absolute priority. So this is the institutionalization of the guiltiness of the civil society 
of the crisis and the internet situation. So, uh, by the way, this, this change of the constitution was promoted by the social democrats. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I think that is the, the big challenge we are facing. Once the society is ready to understand that the effects of moral is being used to moral concept instead of an economical concept, uh, concept that we can change if we want to, uh, we will have what a very big step. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all, all three. We heard that. Uh, I think we all have probably here also in, in, in the UK that we have been living beyond our possibilities, <laughs> that we all parted, we all benefited from the good times, and then we all now have to pay. So this audit as a tool of, of asking us and answering where the money went and if it was our party or the bank's party mm -hmm. or the real estate mm -hmm. party. It, it's, a, it's an answer that the society uh, actually needs in, in order to, to advance. Uh, the banking bailout is not only um, one of the key elements in these three countries, but as probably was here uh, in many other countries. Uh, and it can be also uh, one of the key issues in, in, in the UK. We heard before then that Five, just five banks in the UK uh, represent 200% of UK's GDP. If one of these banks failed, well, <laughs> it would be it would be very lot as any other. So, and, and, and that's where everything starts. Um, we we heard from from Jeremy that uh, the the only can be an education, information access, participation tool towards democracy. Uh, and, 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 and as I said, it's a political question, all this has to be a political process. But we also heard from Vicky that something that started as, as an accomplishment of time is something you can build a campaign on it. You need the numbers, you need the information, and you need rigorous uh, information uh, in order to be taken seriously. Um, the audit to not just to unveil the numbers and the details, but also the big picture. That as uh, a tool to foster neoliberalism. That's also uh, one one use of, of this of this audit, as, as um, Javier was saying. Uh, answering a question that was put in, in the uh, in the panel before, illegitimacy is a complex political concept that applies to many aspects and many issues. And we have to look at it uh, with a very broad perspective, social, political, economical, gender, and environmental perspective, because that has impact in all these uh, spheres. Uh, and then just this, this virtuous line of specific research, understanding the issues, empowerment of people as they understand, mobilization, and then cancellation. Cancellation, as uh, Jeremy said, in, in when I ask about the challenge, it's not going to be an easy thing. It's not the fast path. It's a very long, uh, slow process to get to there. And we have the example from the Global South Movement uh, to, to understand that. Uh, it's difficult and long term to build different power relations, and we have to be prepared for that. Otherwise, we will just get frustrated. Uh, it's not a, a, a magic tool. I think we all understand that the audit is just one tool, one part of bigger campaigns and bigger mobilization <laughs> uh, highlighted by I think, the three of, of them. One of the main obstacles, uh, all of them also said, is the lack of transparency and the difficult access to information. Not only regarding that, that we uh, encounter that lack of transparency in our everyday life, in our uh, local, regional, and uh, national budgets, for example. And then understanding that information. I, I love this constructed ambiguity. This, I mean, we're not taught into economy in, in the school. We don't learn economy in the school. Because it's, it's better that we don't know these issues, that we lay these issues uh, for, for the experts. Well, we're not experts. We're not economists in, in the Spanish audience. And with a little bit of help, with a little bit of attention, we can deconstruct this construct uh, ambiguity. Uh, we have to be coordinated. One of the challenges is the coordination, not only at the local level, but also at the international uh, level. And I really like the, what uh, Vicky and, and, 
and and Javier shared about the empathy and the social work of convincing people uh, that this this guilt that has been placed upon us uh, is actually also a constructed imaginary that we have to work on, 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 on that and we have to believe in ourselves and in our power to to deal with, with also with these issues, no? And overcome this overwhelming shock of living under austerity and, and under the crisis because otherwise the solution will never come from from up there. Uh, this is a uh, try to summarize uh, all this. And uh, I would like to ask uh, our colleagues in, to start, before the questions, to start with a round of other comments, also like three, four minutes uh, from other countries. Okay, back in the mix, guys.